expected to enable the beneficiaries to upgrade their skills and knowledge. It's a technical course. We say that knowledge is power. And I believe uh, with what you have learned, we have uh, managed to work on the equipment, we, you have prepared to, to get certified. I believe that uh, with a team of 25 or 23, uh, it's going to move Gamtel to the next level. All the courses undertaken during the week-long training are seen to be of fundamental importance to the capacity needs of the country and are all in tandem with government's vision 2020. Changes in the business environment calls for a bigger demand on customer service capabilities of our people. Gamtel has a big role to play in the endeavor. Omijai, GRTS. Members of the Gambia Fashion Designers Association have presented baby items and other materials to the Serekuna Health Center. The move is to complement President Jame's 1,011 bed initiative. Fatu Jassi reports. It could be recalled that less than six months ago, the Gambia Fashion Designers Association held a fundraiser with Senegalese artist Fatu Gelo. Proceeds of which they promised to invest in complementing the President's 1,011 bed initiative. Well, this is the association fulfilling that pledge. An assortment of baby clothing, detergents and buckets, bed sheets, among other items were donated to the Serakunda Health Center. A month day, Jai Jai, the association said they hope to continue. The association is very pleased to be able to help the Serakunda Health Center. And we are promising that every year we have proceeds from whatever we do, we will come back and help the community. Idosen Conte and Chan Kanjalo both said that this is what the association stands for and they hope to do more in the coming years, especially in the health sector. Their sister Methron of the health center could not say much but appreciate what the association has done for the health center, saying these are some of the most needed items in the health center. Mothers of newly born babies that were lucky to witness the ceremony were given clothes and other baby materials. They too could not hide their excitement. This is not the first time that the Game Efficient Designers Association doled out to the health sector, and according to them, it won't obviously be the last. For JRTS News, I am Fatu Jassi. Hundreds of volunteers from six communities in the southern Senegalese region of Kazamans and the Bojan Bajan Manga families took part in farming activities on President Jame's mother's farm in Bujinga village. The exercise involved plowing on Aja Fatu Asombi Bojan's vast grounded farm. Samuel Bar reports. <laughs> It was another eventful day at President Jame's mother's garnet farm in her home village of Bujinga, Fony Kansala. Dozens of volunteers from more than six communities in the Senegalese region of Kazamans joined the Bojang, Bajan and Manga families to plow and cultivate Aja Asombi Bojang's 10 hectare groundnut farm. These professional farmers in their own respect made a very incredible job by completely plowing the President's mother's vast groundnut land. They are never left behind any time President Jame calls for help, as they are always eager to work for him. Disembarking on the farm in the morning with their farming implements, indicating their resolve to conquer the task at hand, they got the job done within a few hours. Following President Jame's just ended meet the people store, he reiterated in numerous occasions the need for people to farm to make a food self-sufficient Gambia. With this message being the key focus of the tour, the president's mother, leading by example, cleared and cultivated a farm of several kilometers in her village, a move seen by many as a way of responding to his son's back to the land clarion call. While these energetic men and women trod their way to the end of the farm, they were joined by Pa Usman Bojang, whose presence at the granite farm was seen as an impetus to the workers. The KGI manager expressed delight for the support these volunteers rendered to his aunt. These communities are the latest to lend support to the Jame family, as more and more people recognize the positive bearing this agricultural undertaking have on the lives of the citizenry. Samuel Ba, GRTS. The Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations, in collaboration with the Gambia government, organized a day's validation forum 
on the country's program framework. The gathering, as we hear in this report by Ominjai, attracted participants from various government departments. The country program framework, CPF, is the culmination of extensive consultations with a wide range of stakeholders and partners within and outside the country. This framework has been formulated to ensure synergies and complement with long and medium term development frameworks on the program for accelerated growth and development 2012 to 2015. The draft document amply demonstrates FAO's commitment to partnering with the government of the Gambia in providing technical assistance and advice in the formulation and implementation of policies, thereby serving as a benchmark in the history of FAO's assistance to the Gambia. I must say that the Food and Agriculture Organization, in cooperation with the government of the Gambia, is about or have made a significant departure from the age-long ad hoc demand-driven project approaches they have been involved in. The FAO, moving to a long-term needs-driven result, will do a great deal of good to the Republic of the Gambia and the farming community in general. Having a very good document is one thing, and translating it into concrete action on the ground, it's, it's another thing. So I would like to, at this point, urge that uh, we all put our hands together and to collaborate effectively, you know, and create the necessary uh, partnerships, the synergies and complementarities as outlined in the document, which are prerequisites for really uh, getting something solid on the ground by 20, 20, 2016. This move as seen by individuals is one of the most significant moves taken towards agricultural development in the Gambia. This move, as far as I'm concerned, could be regarded as one of the most significant moves that has been taken towards agricultural development in this country. I think the move is beneficial because it will improve or it will enhance on sustainability. This country program framework is the blueprint for development cooperation between the government of the Gambia and the FAO in their quest for sustainable natural resource in the country. Uminjai, GRTS. Allegations on the use of chemical weapons in Syria by pro-Assad forces reignite calls for urgent investigations and the ugly specter of gun rape once again flies in India. We'll be back with those and other stories after this break. Ghana's leading ICT company, assemblers of mobile phones and computers, is now in the Gambia too. We are happy to bring our services to the people of Gambia and look forward to lasting relationship with the state and its people. Come choose from ROG's range of phones and computers and enjoy delightful after-sale service and the confidence of warranties that will keep your devices good as new. Visit ROG at 62 Caraba Avenue, Circula KSMD, opposite the Pipeline Mouse, or check out ROGGambia.com for more information. RLG, probably yours. Welcome back. As allegations about the use of chemical weapons by pro-government forces in Syria intensify with international calls for urgent investigation, ITV, the British broadcaster, has released an extremely graphic video providing fresh evidence of increased human carnage. They say it was acquired from a credible source. CNN's Frederick Platin takes a closer look at that development. This is said to be the first independent video of the alleged chemical weapons attack in the suburbs of Damascus. It was obtained by British pastor ITV News, saying they got it from a trustworthy independent Syrian filmmaker. Its content is extremely graphic, the shots allegedly taken in the town of Zamalka shortly after the incident on Wednesday morning. 
I managed to speak to this woman who didn't want to be identified. She has relatives in Zamalka and said she got there a few hours after it was allegedly hit by chemical weapons. Several of her relatives were killed, she told me. Others remain gravely sick. They have very 